Got to close the door. I guess Tony's going to be calling there. And theme song. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 33 30. of Kyle. Kyle's and Three Counts. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been here, man. This place looks foreign to me right now. <laughs> it's because Devin doesn't love us anymore. Yeah, fuck you guys. But uh, <laughs> uh, right now it's me and Kyle rolling. Uh, I guess it's the the original two, man. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> man, it's been a while since it's been you and me in the studio. Tony might call in, but we'll see. But uh, Kyle, why don't you go ahead and throw out your social media and all that good stuff, and then we'll jump into the topics for today. You can find me on uh, social media, on Instagram and Twitter, at Detroit Knockout, at Detroit, N-O-K-O-U-T. Uh, find me on Facebook, at Kyle Collison. I'll add you. Um, and follow us at uh, Knockouts and Three Counts Podcast on Facebook, at KO3C Pod on Twitter. Check us out on our website, uh, KO3C Pod.com. Yeah. And uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at Devin63. That's D E V I N T H E 63. You can hit me up on Instagram at all steak, no sizzle. That's one word. Uh, hey, if you're looking for a car, check out SouthfieldQualityCars.com. Once you go in to uh, make your purchase after looking at their inventory on the website, uh, go in and use the reference number 19309. That's 19309. 1939. No, 19309. 1939. Receive, he was right the first time. Whatever. And uh, you will receive $500 off <laughs> on your purchase of a new vehicle. All right. What is a vehicle? A vehicle? It's, a, it's almost like an automobile, but vehicular. Um. <laughs> I don't know of what you speak. You speak foreign language. Oh. Yeah, I speak uh, Devin. But... Um, <laughs> so we we've we've had a pretty busy week, man. Um Yeah, life can life can fuck off right now. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. Work, life, all that good shit. But um I thought we would start off talking a little bit of UFC. We haven't really talked a lot of UFC lately. Um UFC quite honestly has been kind of up and down over the past pretty much this year. Um, UFC 224 was was uh, this weekend. We went to Buffalo Wild Wings and watched that. But before we jump into that, uh, did you hear about the the new television deal that they just signed with ESPN? Yeah, I did. So you, you got any initial thoughts on that? Um, I don't. I don't really know that it'll be much different than Fox. I mean, if if they signed on the same kind of terms to where they were. If they signed on the same kind of terms to what they were with Fox, I mean, I don't really see it being it, it's too a, different. It, it's it's a little bit different. Um, What's the big difference? Well, ESPN, uh, I, I'm not sure how long it's been out, but they have a streaming service called ESPN Plus, and it's a, it's a uh, subscription service. It's a four ninety nine a month. Right now, the only thing that I know that's on there is uh, Kobe Bryant has a show called Details where he like breaks down film and stuff like that. But uh, I guess they're trying to get more content for that subscription service. So you think that might take over Fight Pass? Pretty much. Like they're 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 going to do fifteen events that's going to be on ESPN Plus, and. So in order to watch these fights, you're going to have to sign up for ESPN+. Plus. That's what I was going to say. I could see them doing more where they do the some of those fights maybe on ESPN+, Plus, but I think they'll still keep Fight Pass for the library and all that kind of shit. Too. Well, that's the weird thing. The library is going to be on ESPN+, Plus too. So basically, it, it makes Fight Pass almost obsolete. Um, 
See, I, but to me, that's kind of, I feel like that's kind of dumb. Because then what happens when your contract is up with ESPN and then what? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, they're, they're going to figure something out with Fight Pass. They probably have some Fight Pass exclusive uh, fights. But, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. I have, I have not watched a lot of UFC this year. I mean... I haven't either, to be honest, and it's cr- it's crazy for me to say that because I'm an avid a- MMA fan, man. But yeah, I just I don't know, man. It just they haven't had too many fights that have really made me like, well, damn, that's something I want to watch. Like, and, and like part of the problem I think too is that I feel like it's too many fights. I've said that for a long time. You know, you got the FS1 fights. You have the the big fights on Fox. You got a uh, Fight Pass exclusive one. And you basically have like twelve to fourteen pay per views every year. So with it being so many fights, I felt like it, it kind of got oversaturated. But what? I'm... Wait, do we have a call there? It took long enough to answer that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Tony. Did you, did you hang out with a photo? <laughs> did you really? <laughs> <laughs> man, we're off to a bang up start. Oh man, this it goes along with the clusterfuck of a week we've had. <laughs> he'll he'll call back in, in a second. Is he back? That's what happens when you talk shit to producer Randy. Um, <laughs> you get cut off the air. Uh, did y'all give out y'all social media? Uh, yeah. We gave out ours. Why don't you give out yours, sir? Man, I'm Tony Thunder. That's it. That, <laughs> that was anticlimactic. Yeah, man. Uh, producer Randy, did you get on social media? No. You can follow Randy at Hang Up on Thunder at Twitter. <laughs> um, hang Up underscore Thunder on Instagram. And yeah. Man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Though, you social media. You can get a car? Huh? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you don't get to interrupt with the can promo get a code. Ring, even though Merle don't listen to the show like he said he do. Um, RentaWrestlingRing.com, is it your bar mitzvah? Is it your birthday? Is it Japan's birthday? Is it Mother's Day? Is it Father's Day? Is it the 4th of July? You want to wrestle ring? You want, some people, you want to see some people drop kick each other? RentaWrestlingRing.com. All right. It, yeah. Go, go ahead. Throw your real social media out there, sir. Um, uh, at the Tony Thunder on Twitter. I'm Tony Thunder on Facebook. I'm Tony underscore Thunder on Instagram. I'm Tony underscore Thunder on Snapchat, even though I'm never on there. And, uh, yeah, that's it, man. All right. You got any uh, any shows coming up you need to plug, man? Man, this Saturday, if you believe in God and God is on my side, <laughs> I will be in Phoenix, Arizona Ooh. at Club De Porto Calypso in Phoenix, Arizona, doing some Lucha stuff, flipping I'm going to do a cartwheel, and then I'm going to leg drop somebody. That's the best flip move I got. <laughs> that, that's, all, that, that's all the flippy shit you got, man? That's the flippy shit I got. Cartwheels and leg drops. <laughs> so then he wouldn't piss off Cornette then? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Man. That's going to be my new gimmick. I'm going to just start doing cart roll, uh, cartwheels and like baby rolls before all my moves. <laughs> That might work out for you, man. Let me <laughs> call myself the Flippy Do guy. The what? The Flippy Tony Flippy Do Thunder. <laughs> All right, let's get back on uh, <laughs> on a uh, task here. Uh, we talk a little bit of UFC first, man. Uh, hey, Tony, when's the last time you watched the UFC fight, man? The last time I watched the UFC fight live? Uh, just in general. Oh man. Uh, I mean, I catch, like, playbacks here and there, but the last time I've been invested into UFC has been a while, man. It's been, like, maybe 2015, oh. 16. Yeah. Uh, so so it's not just us, man. We... That, to me, that was the best era. Like, you had – well, I'll say, but to me, my favorite era of UFC was 2006 till about 2015. You know, when you had guys like Leo Machida and John Jones was young. You had Silva kicking ass. You had – Force Griffin out there still fresh. You had Uriah Hall at Promise. You had, you know what I mean, uh, Cal Sonning. You had GSP. You had, you know, guys at the top of their game who really made the company UFC what it was, you know. 
All right. Uh, so in other words, that, that's when I was most invested into it. So in other words, like we've been saying for a while back when the UFC actually had some stars other than Ronda Rousey and Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, sorry. They don't have that but... star power anymore. I mean, I like I like uh, Francis Ngannou, whatever his name is. That dude, he beats ass. He's a big motherfucker. He beats ass. Except like he got derailed. That's the problem. Everybody they've tried to build ends up getting their ass whooped. <laughs> right. Yeah, because yeah, there's so much competition. Like, you can't really build a star, you know what I mean, if he's going to lose to the next guy who nobody knows who he is. Yeah, we, we were kind of talking about a little bit about the new uh, TV deal and kind of like what's – well, especially with me and Kyle, and me, me and Kyle are probably the two more uh, rabid UFC MMA fans, and even we haven't been watching it lately, man. It's just been kind of, you know, blah. It's just, well, it's just too many, like you were saying before Tony came on the line, man. It's just like, you've, like, we watched the fights after what we were doing on Saturday, which we'll get into that in a little bit, but we went out and watched the fights Saturday. Okay, decent card. But we're not even two days away from that, and Dana White's already posted fight week there's another fucking fight this weekend it's like hot damn guy you got to fight every weekend you're getting to be like the uh, the local promotions and shit there's like no hype to any of the fights right who gives a fuck well, see, they're, they're they're trying to they're trying to get more into making it like um i guess football or basketball but they have no seasons it's just a continuous year long thing and i think that's the issue you know back like i said back in the good days, as I call them, of UFC, you probably had one every two months, every other month, you know. Uh, if it was once a month, it was like, oh, man, this fight's coming. You know, I'm, I'm ready for it. Right. Now there's one every weekend. It's like, who's this guy? Yeah. Exactly. Completely agreed. I mean, like, in the era you were talking about, I mean, like, look at it this way. Back when I'll even go maybe, well, it would have been around that time, like right around 2006, back when – Chuck Liddell and them were fighting. Okay, one month you'd have Chuck Liddell versus Randy Couture. Then another month or two months later, you'd have fucking Tim Sylvia versus Andre Arlovsky or whatever. Right. Like, there was build up to these fights. Like, if you just run a fight every weekend, like... It... Well, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's not the WWE. You know, they, I mean, of course you want to build up for your big fights, but if you're trying to make it a sport where people just watch every week and start to know names, you can't really have a build-up. I mean, nobody is building up the, every week of every Lions game. You're a Lions yeah. fan, you watch the Lions, you know what I mean? But it's not like, oh, next week you're going to see the Detroit Lions take on the Dallas Cowboys and the winner yeah. making a chance at the Super Bowl if they win every other game this season. Right. And, I I agree with that. I Like I say, I guess just for me, I just feel like, with there being, like Devin was talking about, with there being so many of them, I think you kind of get to a point where you start burning people out. Where, like, if you compare that to something like, I don't know, we'll just use WWE as an example. Like, you know, they've got, you know, not that you can't have this with MMA, but I'm just saying this is why, like, WWE not having any sort of off season or anything works because there's, like, a story and shit. UFC can't have a story, but when you have so many fights, people and there's no stars built, people are like, "Well, fuck it, I don't. I mean, I don't know who the fuck that is. So why do I, you know, why do I give? Well, a how fuck? do you really build stars in this era of UFC? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and that's, that's 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 kind of the question right now, man. We we've talked about it before. Uh, Ronda Rousey's not wrestling. Uh, Anderson Silva suspended for two years. John Jones, who knows what's going on with him. Uh, Conor McGregor, who knows when the next time he'll jump into a fight. Not, I mean, in the actual cage, not, a, you know, in parking lots and throwing stuff at buses. But <laughs> it, it, I, I don't, and I, I've been saying for the longest, they have a problem building stars. Even when they had uh, these people running hot, they basically focused everything on them and didn't start, you know, pushing younger talent. And when they did push younger talent, they would, Basically, you know, well, get I mean, the legs chopped away that's, that's, the, that's the thing. That's the thing. What do you call pushing younger talent in a in, in something like UFC? Perfect, perfect example. I mean, like, can, per, per, what, is, what is pushing? Perfect example. Uh, Amanda Nunez, who just fought this pe- this uh, weekend, um, she right. was the second person that beat Ronda Rousey. Uh, basically, right. Ronda Rousey's last fight. If you looked at the buildup for that fight, you would not have known that Amanda Nunez was even fighting in that fight. It was basically all Ronda Rousey. 
uh, they have what's the name of the show that they they do uh, the countdown. Yeah, the countdown show. If that show was forty minutes, forty if it was an hour long, about forty five of that was all Ronda Rousey talk, not you know talking about her opponent, how she has a chance to win this fight. It was just all Ronda Rousey. And you had an opportunity there to, to let that. people know who Amanda Nunez is. I mean, she's she's from Brazil. Right. She's, she speaks pretty good English. Not, I mean, not the greatest, but she speaks pretty good English. You got an opportunity to build up the next star, but basically you give her like 15 minutes. And the thing is, she was the champion. So stuff like that, that th- those small things. Mighty Mouse Johnson. Uh, he needs. They need. They don't never like when he fights, man. They don't never hype his shit up. And the guy ain't lost in how many. I mean, they, they hype up Mighty Mouse. I mean, I haven't never seen Mighty Mouse lose a fight. I don't know if he has lost a fight because, like I said, I haven't watched recently. But Mighty Mouse was a beast, man. That motherfucker. I mean, right. So UFC fans and fans who watch, they should know who he is. When it comes to panning to UFC audiences, they should know who Mighty Mouse is. I mean, they haven't made him. A star, per se. They haven't said, hey, this is the greatest pound-for-pound fighter we have right now. Invest into him and, you know, that kind of stuff. But dude's a beast. He, he goes yeah. just as hard and fast in the fifth round as he does the first. Well, but you're talking about his skill. But here's the thing. Monty Mouse is, is huge in the video game community. He has one of the biggest Twitch pages out there. But the UFC doesn't use that to, to, to help, you know, uh, promote him. Like you, if I had Mighty Mouse Johnson and he's like this big guy in the video game community, why are you not having him? You know, whenever they have UFC Fight Week, why are you not having a video game tournament sponsored with you know Mighty Mouse Johnson there? You know, bringing fans in and stuff like that. It, it the opportunities are there. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. And like I said, I mean, UFC fans should know who Mighty Mouse is. I mean, I'm not even really a UFC fan anymore, but I know who Mighty Mouse is. You know, one of my favorite fights in UFC history is him against Dotson. You know, that that was a great that fight. fight was crazy. I agree. I agree. I, I don't know, man. I, I just, I think the biggest thing, and I can agree with you on this, Devin, and I think, Tony, you would agree too. Like, I think the one of the biggest issues UFC has right now is like, yeah, it's a lot different in trying to push somebody in a sport like this as opposed to you know WWE or something like that but UFC needs to make a concerted effort to try to build some names outside of Ronda Rousey, John Jones and Conor McGregor. But see, here's the thing, like the the guys who the, the names and the stars that you're naming right now are guys and women who was undefeated, who was beaten ass, who had that star power. I mean, when you build a person up as being the baddest fighter, you know, if they can't keep that star yeah. power themselves after a loss, they can't do it. I mean, well, what about the Diaz brothers, though? When, the Diaz brothers, they don't care to talk. They don't want to be stars. When you see them in interviews, they get up and walk off. They're like, yeah, I'm here to fight. That's it. They love fighting. They have that fighting star power but they don't they don't like to keep that star power you don't see them you know on red carpet events you don't see them uh hyping up their own fights like mcgregor you don't see them you know undefeated like that a, a great another example would be um cowboy cerrone yeah you know he um he was built his name and then he just lost it, it seems like every time cowboy is about to be a star he loses and it's just like yeah. it's pulled right from under him because like how can you get behind that guy when every time his momentum gets up there he drops the ball and you know what tony something else you, you brought up too uh, a lot of this is on the fighters as well um take a guy like chael son and chael son he was a good fighter well he is a good fighter but um i'm not gonna say he was the best but People he was knew, good at talking shit. Yeah, he was able to talk people into a building. He talked himself into multiple championship fights with uh, the likes of Anderson Silva and John Jones, all because he and, and a lot of it came because he was a big wrestling fan. He actually like trained in wrestling uh, at the power plant back in the day from uh, WCW. So he was able to translate the, the the skills that he learned, you know, cutting promos to you know the, the UFC and. Daniel Cormier is another guy that's kind of into wrestling that kind of does the same thing. Conor McGregor was that's what, probably, in my opinion, the big reason why he was such a star is because he talked, he knew how to talk people into a building. 
So well, I agree completely with him because, quite frankly, when he fought Jose Aldo, there really wasn't a reason for it. You the first time they fought, there was no point for he talked his way into that fight. There were other people that should have had And that's that what he's first. good for. I agree, I mean, and that's like, what I'm even, saying. He was good when for Chow, when, when Chow loses and he still talks, it's like, oh, man, i got to see him fight again. He's talking too much shit. Like, when he lost to Bone Jones, he was still in the ring talking shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. When, Mc, when McGregor loses, he still talks shit. That's what Ali was good for. Ali to lose the fight, he still, I'm still prettier than that gorilla-looking goon, and you see me <laughs> next time, I'm going to punch his lights out. And, you know, yeah. it's like, damn, like, this motherfucker don't quit. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's that star power, man. Most fighters don't have that star celebrity trait, star power, or that charisma. Like, a lot of fighters lack charisma in the UFC. And I don't know if you guys agree with me on that or not. I agree completely. That seems to be a missing element in fighters. Well, hey, Tony, before you uh, jumped on the line, we were talking about the the new uh, TV deal. Did you you hear anything about the details of that? I haven't. Well, they just signed the deal with ESPN. They're going to do 15. Oh, wait, but that's huge. It is, but there's a caveat. So you, they're not, it's not going to be on ESPN. It's going to be on the, the ESPN streaming service, ESPN+. Plus. And the streaming service is like it's four ninety nine a month. And basically to watch the fights, you're going to have to sign up for the streaming service. And you're going to get the, the UFC fight library as well. Uh, the Contender Series is going to be on there as well. So basically it's going to replace UFC Fight Pass, which I haven't had in about two years. And it's about $5 cheaper than the UFC Fight Pass. So basically Fight Pass is obsolete now. In order to watch these fights, you're going to have to subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. So for you being a casual fan, uh, do you see yourself signing up for this ESPN Plus service? It's not just going to be UFC. I know, like I was saying, uh, Kobe Bryant has a show on there now called Details where he kind of breaks down film, you know, from his perspective. And there's other shows on there too. But do you see yourself signing up for ESPN Plus, especially now that the UFC is going to be on there? Um, Probably not, honestly. I mean, is, uh, what's the monthly fee with it? It's uh, five bucks a month. I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, to see some good fights for five bucks a month. And uh, I don't like Kobe, personally. <laughs> no, I'm a Pistons fan at heart, you know. Um, <laughs> that's why I don't like Jordan that much either. You know, I'm a Pistons fan, you know. Um, yeah. But I like LeBron. There you go. That's weird, right? Yeah, um, yeah I agree. <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> We're not going to get into why Brian's better than both of them, but I will say this. Uh, that's actually not a bad <laughs> – don't get me started, Devin. That's actually not a bad deal, you know. Um, if I got into UFC more and it's something that I wanted to look into, I, I would definitely wouldn't hesitate to do it. All right, well, let me uh, – well, Kyle, you see yourself signing up for the ESPN Plus at 5 bucks a month? It depends on – it depends on what's going to actually be shown on the real ESPN, though. If they're only going to be showing... I think it's only going to be on the subscription service. Like, all the fights are going to be on ESPN, except for, like, pay-per-views and shit? No, no, or no. Like, the no. ESPN Plus, I mean? Uh, pay-per-views will still be pay-per-views, but everything else is going to be... All these the 15 events are going to be on the subscription service only. Not, not on... And that's too. the only place they're going to be doing fights. Like, there's no... Yep. Shit. I mean, I'd consider it, but that kind of sucks. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask you... Let me, Spice it up a little bit for you. So, you know, WWE's contract is going to be up at the end of the year. If, oh, shit. If WWE and, and ESPN, which they have a little bit of a relationship right now. If, Man, that shit is not about to happen. That is not going to happen. Cut it out. I'm just saying, hey. Cut they'll go to Fox out. before they go to ESPN, dude. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm not saying. Cut that out, too. They are not leaving USA. Wait, wait. I'm not saying if they go completely to ESPN. I'm not saying that. But what if they have some content that's only on ESPN, let's say, every every quarter? Sort of like how they kind well, of did like the main event. The, the, I, think, I think that would be something called the WWE Network for nine ninety nine. I was just about um, to say, I have the network. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think, you I beat mean, me to I it. That's exactly what I was going to say. 
I don't think I'm partnering with anyone like that to do a monthly deal for a subscription to a network when they have one themselves. You know. Well, I also didn't. Um, I also didn't see I them see doing them a... doing maybe like an ESPN special, maybe like a Saturday Night Main Event, like they did yeah. with NBC. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. NBC like maybe, linked to maybe, USA. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe have it like once a quarter, like four times a year, have a big thing there. Uh, you know, yeah, like you said, Saturday Night's main event. I could see that. If if they added that to the ESPN streaming package, would you then sign up for it at five dollars a month? I mean, I, I personally think that I would I would sign up off the UFC alone, but I think with the ESPN being what they are, they don't they, they kinda of talk about pro wrestling here and there, but their demographic and UFC fans are initially gonna think, Oh, I'm not getting it for that big shit. Of course wrestling fans are gonna get it and that's a whole different market where millions of people will get that app just for that wrestling show. But then you got guys like me who watch you know, VIP box and other streaming shit that I shouldn't be watching. I uh, hope I didn't say that too loud and they cut it off. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there there are certain events, you know, like I don't have cable. I don't, I'm watching the swag now. You know, I don't have cable. How I got, how I got the USA network on my TV. You know, there's always going to be around, you know, those things. Just like the ESPN app with UFC fights. I'm, I'm going to find it on for, – for, for, uh, I'm not going to say the other one because I don't want them to take it down. But I'll find it on the screen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, don't, 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 don't tell all your business now. <laughs> yeah, man. I know about ten of them. They can't cut down all of them. <laughs> all right. Hey, a lot of lonely dudes said the same thing about Backpage, but that got shut down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, they, they they all going to Crush Spot now. Oh, that's where they at now. <laughs> yeah. What's that again? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. So uh, let's let's. Let's run down a uh, card from uh, this p- past weekend's UFC 224. It was actually it was actually a pretty damn good card. I, I got to give him credit for that. Um, I know, Tony, you didn't watch, so um, you, you can put your input on some of these fighters if you if you know, know about them. But the uh, first fight yeah. on the card was uh, Lyoto Machida versus Mr. Vitor Belfort. Oh, Machida's back! Oh, oh he, he's back and uh, kicking ass, man. He... Uh, <laughs> he basically put his foot in in Belfort's face, man, and kicked him into retirement. Dog, that shit was dope. He did the same thing that Anderson Silva did. Uh, was that Vitor that he did it to, too? Yes, it was. Vitor has the, been the only person I've ever seen that's gotten two front kick knockouts, and Machida did his ass dirty. He hit him in the side of the head and fucking slumped him, and he was out. Like, it was... It yeah, was Machida is that guy, man. I just want to say that. Like, Machida used to be one of my favorites. Uh, he he, I don't know what it is about him, but he kind of remind me of Bruce Lee. I don't know if it's just like his demeanor or what, but dude kind of had like that Bruce Lee esque aura, you know. What well, I mean? he but was he just wasn't as badass as Bruce Lee. He was trained like his he was trained a lot by his dad, and his dad kind of had that old school mentality like that. So that might be what it comes from, but. But she just okay, That's all I can say. Yeah, it was do- <laughs> all I'm going to say is it was dope. And Vitor, I hate that you had to go out that way, being it was your quote unquote last fight, but right. you got knocked the fuck out, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, next fight: John Lineker versus Brian Kalir. I, I've never heard of this guy before in my life. He, and I never heard of either of them. Motherfucker. John Lineker is a a beast, but dude, they were fucking throwing bombs. Yes, sir. And uh, Lineker won by. Uh, KO. Can I just say, I don't know if you thought it too, because you were watching it with me, Devin. I thought, like, so Lineker about had him knocked the fuck out in the first round. Yep. He got tired in the second round, and I'm like, man, this bald head motherfucker is going to come back and knock him out. <laughs> and he got lucky because the other guy got tired, but that was a fun fight to watch because they beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah, basically it was uh, whose cardio is the best in this one, man. Who, who can who can uh, last yeah. the longest? But it was, it was a really good fight. Um, it looked like some shit you see in high school where they basically just throw until somebody falls. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Uh, third fight, which was a very controversial fight. Oh, jeez. Uh, Mackenzie Durham versus uh, Detroit, well, Detroit area's own ABC Amanda Bobby Cooper, who hopefully will be on the show one day. And I, I know she'll have a lot to say about this because her opponent missed weight by seven pounds, which. Uh, wow. And yeah. then did, wouldn't even attempt to go try to lose the weight when she had the hour. I mean, at that point, you know, 
I were to lose seven you pounds. You seven pounds, so you ain't gonna lose no seven well, pounds. No yeah, hour. I don't care yeah, how but much you shit. I agree, but my my thing my thing is this though. Like if you're that far over you didn't try. You weren't doing that shit, like taking that shit serious enough because I could see if you were like two, maybe three pounds, but seven. Shave your head. Shave your head. I've watched people do that. Even females do that. On the Ultimate Fighter, I watched uh, S- uh, Sajara Eubanks did that, and yeah. she cut off her fucking dread so she could fight. Shoot, Ronda's done that before. In, uh, I think she did it in the Olympics one year. I mean, I don't know, man. To me, I just think that that's. I just think that that's a disrespectful thing. But as far as the fight goes, I have to give Dern credit because I thought if there was one area that Amanda had an advantage, it's that Amanda's a natural boxer and's won Golden Gloves and things like that. And Mackenzie caught her with a nasty ass overhand and put her on her ass. Yeah, and uh, choked her out. But I mean, uh, hopefully Amanda bounces back from this. Hopefully the UFC kind of looks at this like. Thank you for taking the fight. We're not going to look at this as no. Oh, they will uh, because that takes record. that takes balls to do that, and at least that shows them that she'll fight. Right. All right. Next fight, and uh, we're going to speed through these last two so we can get to some wrestling. Was my wife Gambino on there, man? Was who? My wife Gambino. Does she do UFC? Who the hell is that? <laughs> Y'all know who Ashley Gambino is? See, I I know some MMA shit. Y'all don't know, huh? Nah, I, I don't know who that Apparently. is. Apparently. Man, damn, y'all got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, that's like that's like one of y'all saying, "Hey, you heard of Cyrus Cyrus Satin?" And I'm like, "Who is that? Like, he a wrestler at XFCW. How the fuck am I not supposed to know who that is? Y'all fucking up." Hey, Amen. Apparently, I've I've got to do some research when I get out of here. <laughs> do y'all know do y'all know who Buddy Hallen is, right? Yeah. All right, let's hype him up. Coming up, so I, oh, spoiler alert. Uh oh. All right, let me, let's run through these last two fights real quick. Kevin Gastelum versus uh, uh, Jacare Souza. Th- this was a robbery. Souza won that fight. I kind of thought I thought the same thing, honestly. Uh, <laughs> but I like both guys though, so I was actually excited for this fight. So, but uh, Gastelum got the split decision, and then Amanda Nunez versus Raquel Pennington. She just went out there, did work, man. I would be shocked if Raquel Pennington can walk right now. And then yeah, they, they were. It seemed to be pretty cool afterwards, man. They, you know, they they. Well, dude, they, they, I think uh, Nunez trained with her with Raquel's girlfriend Tisha Torres, and uh, they, from what I heard, you know, they went out and had a beer afterwards. That's that's pretty cool. Did you? Go sometimes you gotta drink beer to get in your ass for. Wait, what was that? You broke up a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta drink some beer after getting your ass for. You know. I mean, that's amazing to me that you can sit there and you know. Beat somebody's face and then have a beer with well, them afterwards. Man. I mean, unless you've unless you've got someone that's talking a lot of shit before a fight, a lot of times, man, like it's all love. It. You know? I mean, don't get me wrong. When See, that's you... one thing. That's one thing that I can't do. I can't <laughs> have somebody beat my ass and then shake their hand. I can't. That's why I can <laughs> be a fighter. Like I can't have you knock me the fuck out. We didn't beat my ass on national TV, and I'm gonna get up and shake your hand. Fuck that. Uh uh-uh, uh. I'm sorry. I, Y'all miss me with that one. I mean, y'all y'all must be better people than I am because I ain't letting nobody beat my ass so I can get up and shake their hand. Fuck that. Man. All right. Let, let's take a quick break and let's come back and let's talk a little bit of a uh, little wrestling. And uh, we're going to talk about what you were up oh, to this wrestling. weekend. We're going to talk about what you were up to this weekend, Mr. Thunder. Oh, me? Yeah, you. I did some stuff. Yeah, you did stuff. But uh, Oh, man. We'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about that right after this break.
And we are back, and we're going to talk. And that's when I told her, man, that I had to ask her at that point how much she cost. <laughs> that's Mr. Tony Thunder, <laughs> Mr. Kyle Collison. Wait, what are we back? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, mother. Oh, man. <laughs> Why did you ain't tell me? I, I kind of did. <laughs> oh, man. But we're back, and uh, we're going <laughs> to talk a little bit of wrestling. Um, I don't know, man. I think we should leave, kind of leave the Federation, as uh, you call it, Tony. We should leave the Federation out of it right now. Let's just talk about... Uh, leave the Fed alone? Yeah, man. Cause Even leading up to... But money, we, got, we got briefcases coming up. We, I was about to say. We got we got a couple weeks until that. So let's talk about Ring of Honor, man. Uh, Ring, oh, man. Ring of Honor had their War of the Worlds tour. Uh, I think it was a four-city tour. And uh, they just happened to stop in a little town called Royal Oak. And uh, oh. I think, I know I was there. What, what about you, Kyle? Were you there? I may just have been in the same place. Uh-huh. And uh, Mr. Thunder, I think you were there as well, sir. I don't think I was there. I don't remember being there. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I, I saw some weird dude in in a tight black shirt and an afro, man. I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bad. That, 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 wasn't, that wasn't Tony Thunder. Oh, that, that, that was Larry Lightning? My bad. Like a, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that was Lance Lightning. And she, uh, <laughs> he had to break up some shit with uh, Japanese, Japanese tippy winks. And Tony Rose was there. You know, had to break some shit up. Man. It was going down. No, nah, man, um... I had the uh, honor and privilege, the honor. See, that's the ah, word I wanted to throw out there. I, see you did I had that. the honor, play on word. I had the honor of uh, doing some some crew work for Ring of Honor when they were with uh, the World of Worlds. Man, it was a uh, it was a crazy humbling experience. Man, like uh, I got more motivated doing crew work than I have being in the ring going against dudes. And I think the main thing that really lit my fire was being in the ring with Cody. Takahashi during a match like that shit just got me pumped. I was like fuck I want to drop Cody right now fuck. <laughs> so like now I'm motivated to get to that point where I'm in the ring against Cody whooping his ass like it has to happen man is, is that like a, a bucket list thing for you now man to, to have a match it, with Cody now, it is now on the list of buckets and I don't know if the viewers notice but um, I have a bucket list in wrestling and I usually do one every year or I do like a, a Cody list, so to speak, right. where I put down certain promotions, certain things I want to do. And every year I clear that list. Uh, last year, I think it was, uh, I think it was wrestling two, uh, two new promotions, turned down a promoter that once said no to me, uh, win a, a championship and like two or three other things. And I, I did it uh, this year. I haven't achieved all of them. The ones I have achieved, I forgot what they were. I got them written down. I always write my goals down. But uh, the two that I'm missing, that I know I'm missing, is wrestling on the West Coast, which will be done this weekend in Phoenix, Arizona, cutting that's that what, off the list. And the second up. thing is wrestling a former WWE talent. So those are the two things I got to do this year, and uh, one of them will be completed this weekend. And I still got like six, seven months left to complete this shit. So I'm on a roll, man. That's what's up, man. But uh, you, you want to talk about uh, other than uh, you know breaking up? A f- <laughs> now let's talk about that for a second, man. That that was that was classic. So for those of you that watch New Japan and uh, Ring of Honor, um, Takahashi, one of my favorite wrestlers, Los Ingrenables de Japón, represented. Uh, he he has yeah. his little his friend Daryl. I think it's Daryl Junior now. Yep. See, what happened was he saw Tony Thunder wrestle with Mr. Tiddly Wings and said, I'm going to make Mr. Tiddly Wings a cat. And then he went and got a stuffed animal cat and made Mr. Tiddly Wings a cat. I was doing that shit in 2012. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do it no more, though. So there's that. But, you know. Yeah, it's Daryl Jr. now. Uh, Daryl Jr. And then uh, the Bucks and uh, Cody Rose had uh... a... <laughs> Was it Bernard the business Bernard. Yeah. <laughs> Who we met while it's we were Bernard there, too. <laughs> not Barry. It's Bernard. And I, I got Bernard the business bear autograph, man. That was a great moment for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> did he fix his tie enough for you? Yes, he did. <laughs> he fixed his tie several <laughs> times. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, B- Bernard the business bear and uh, Daryl got into a little kerfuffle, and uh, 
you you had to break it up, man. <laughs> man, they was about to scrap it out, and I, I, honestly, I was like, "Yo, man, this is getting a little too out of hand." You know, if, if, I don't know if you noticed, but I was the first one to jump in there, like, "Yo, this is too much." Yes, you were. You know, I saw Cody holding back Bernard, and I saw Takahashi holding back Daryl. I said, "They need help holding these guys back. This is way too much." So I slid in there and I held back Bernard, and he's a strong bear. <laughs> <laughs> he is a strong bear. I tell you that. And uh, it took about seven of us to hold him back, man. He was he was a tough bear, man. He was strong, and uh, yeah, man, it was it was crazy, man. It was like I said, it was a humbling experience, man. Uh, I almost got smacked by uh, Hangman Page, but I got away just in time. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, man, it was crazy. Man, I mean, do y'all have any questions about what happened, or like, I mean, we uh, can get into some shit. Okay. Uh, oh, I can't. I can't. I can't say this. Uh, this may even upset y'all, so sorry if y'all didn't notice or y'all had no idea about this. But um, Jay Lethal was there. Yeah, I heard he got hurt like the night before, and it got pulled, he got uh, replaced by uh, um, Sonata in that four way match. Uh, he wasn't hurt to me, but uh Uh-oh. he was there, and he wrestled the next night in Chicago. So I don't know what's up with that, but. Dude was there, and he was a cool dude. Um, as y'all know, Coca Bano was there. Um, Nato, your boy Naito. I, I got a Naito autograph. I was gonna get a picture with him, but the line was, was a little bit long, and I, I chose to get a Marty Scurll. But uh, yeah, man. I, I honestly, man, like that, it was a pretty stacked card for to be a quote unquote live. That's what show. I said. You know, I don't. I know they don't like to say live show. Or a house show. I know they don't like to use that word, but to be a live show, man, that that car was stacked. And, and it was uh, broadcast on uh, Honor Club as well. So, yeah, I mean, it was all over the internets. All over the interwebs. Yeah. The, the, the face spaces and the, and the book grams. That, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess my question is, like, you know, did you, besides Jay Lethal, did you get to, like, rub any elbows with any of the guys and, you know, chit-chat with them, you know, have conversations, get some advice from any of the guys? Yeah, I mean, me and Shane Taylor, a former guest of the show, we, we sat back there, we talked about hip-hop for a minute. Uh, he thinks that the three greatest rappers of all time that cannot be touched by anyone is uh, KRS, DMX, and Rakim, I think. So we had a good conversation about that hmm. and uh, kind of went a little back and forth. That was a good one. Um, talking to Cody about what was going on before actually going out there, he's like, hey, man, in case things get crazy. I can't pull back the curtain too much, but I will say Cody came up to me and said, hey, man, if things get a little bit too crazy, you know, I might need y'all help out there because, you know, Bernard got a problem with Daryl Jr. I was like, yo, what's the problem? He was like, yo, he wanted to, he wanted to throw hands with him. I'm like, why are you trying to throw hands with Daryl Jr.? He's like, he don't like him like that. He like you bet not get in the ring, or it's gonna get to go down. He wanted to put the pause. Or somehow got in the ring, so. <laughs> so he wanted, wanted to put the uh, tongue tie. He, <laughs> he wanted to put, put the, the pause, pause on him. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Scrappy. <laughs> <laughs> man. Um, yeah, man. Um, Coca Banna. Um, Emma randomly just fucking. I couldn't tell who she was at first. She's coming up to me and. I kind of squint my eyes to look at her, and she's like, hi. And I'm like, hi. And I'm like, oh, shit, that was just Emma just walking right past me, you know. <laughs> uh, got to chat it up with Buddy Hanlon and Red Silas for a while. Um, you know, they, they're they always paying their dues to the business and help the, helping the guys and crew when they didn't really have to. They were helping the crew. Um, Cheeseburger, man, that motherfucker was cool, man. Uh, <laughs> got to ch- uh, chit-chat with him for a while, and uh, – we had to grab some, some of the New Japan guys got there a little early and they forgot their bags. So I helped them grab a couple bags from the guys that they left in his car and stuff. And uh, it seemed like as soon as we were grabbing the bags to go right back into the building, that's when Marty Scroll and Shane Taylor and you remember who was with them? It was a car with Shane Taylor, with, no, Shane Taylor, Marty Scroll, and somebody, I think it was Hangman Page that was with them. And, like, I just pulled up, and they're just all like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, hey, what's up? It's just kind of weird, you know, like, to have those guys come up to you like, oh, hey, I know you. And it's like, no, you don't, but thank you. I, hey, that feels good, you hey, know? Hey, the only person who can really say that he did know me was Shane Taylor. He just walked up. Well, I've met Buddy Hamlin here and there doing shows and stuff. Uh, 
I think two or three other people I knew from doing shows here and there. But Shane Taylor was the only guy that's always big that I know I could just walk up to, like, what's up, bro? And, like, kick it with him and stuff. So, Hey, hey Tony, yeah, qu- um, question for you, man. Kind of like my girl. Um, she kind of asked me this question. I was wondering the same thing. Um, maybe you could shed some light on this. And, Kyle, if you got a question about Ring of Honor, you know, you can ask that next. Um, I know, like, in WWE, you know, like, John Cena has, like, his tour bus. Uh, how do how do Ring of Honor wrestlers travel from town to town? Do they they have, like, um, any of them have, like, service, or they just pile into the car and head from town to town? You know what's crazy? I'm going to tell you all this. I don't, I didn't want to put this out there, but before the show, this is maybe, like, I say like maybe an hour before the show. Your boy NATO was walking around the area, like the whole neighborhood, just walking around like he didn't care. Like he didn't like like hey, I'm gonna just walk around, find something to eat, I'm gonna walk to the store. And like he literally like walked past like a bunch of people and like he took a couple of pictures of people who knew he was and stuff, but he was just out there walking around like it was no big deal. Um most of the guys that I seen they were in rentals. And oh oh, oh that's another crazy thing. Um I don't know what the fuck kind of deal ROH got with Uber, but Jay Lethal was like, oh, I guess I'm not working tonight. I'm going to head to Chicago. And Cabana said something to him like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, I'm going to use the Uber. It's only $30. What the fuck? He's going to get to Chicago? (laughs) Yeah. From Royal Oak to Chicago was $30 fucking dollars. Wow. (laughs) So I I don't know what kind (laughs) of. Benefits or packages they got with these companies or whatnot, but um, they all have really nice fucking rental cars, and uh, I guess Uber is one of their things, and I guess it's hella fucking cheap for them. So man. there's that too. Kyle, you got anything, man? Uh, only thing I was gonna say, man. I mean, I don't really have many questions. I was just gonna say that overall, I thought the show was, I thought it was a pretty dope show. Uh. And I have to say, you know, like you were saying, we got to meet Cody and uh, Bernard the Bear, Business Bear, and uh, the Bucks. Marty Skrull and the Bucks. And, like, all those guys couldn't have been any more cool. Like, all were cool as fuck. Just yeah. like, you know, hey, man, how'd you like the show? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, they even, they they all of them did drops for us, too. Like, didn't give two shits and was like, you know what? It's cool, dude. We'll help you out. No problem. Like, I just thought that it was cool because, like, it's always hit or miss when you meet some of them guys, like whether they're actually going to be cool. Yeah. And I just I thought that was real cool. And uh, the other thing that I thought was funny as shit was what happened at the end of the show oh, when man. they did the being the elite thing and they had set it up so oh, the guy yeah. could propose to his girl. <laughs> and I was laughing my ass off. So they blindfold this chick and spin her around and Hangman Page is like, yo, uh, hit the hang down on Hangman. What and was that? She- it was yeah, hitting the knob on hanging yeah, yeah. or something like that. And and she's walking right towards him and he's like, No, I need you to turn around and old boy that was gonna propose, he's standing there with his belt on like like thrusting his shit out and I'm like, <laughs> What the hell is about to happen right now? <laughs> like for real though, wasn't he? He was he standing was. there with his hands on his hips like, Hey though, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but uh I gotta say that was a pretty dope ass way to be able to propose and that was cool that like the whole bullet club was just cool as shit about it. Like, it was like, yo, it was cool. So yeah, we I, talked to the guy after the show. Yeah, I asked the guy, like, uh, how did he get that done? I, mean, he's, I guess he met Hangman at a show in Mount Pleasant. And uh, he asked him, like, could you help me propose to my girlfriend? And Hangman was like, well, w- would you do it for the show? And he was like, well, shit, yeah. So, yeah, you know, congratulations to them, man. Hopefully, you know. Uh, yeah, for sure. Everything works out for those, that crazy. And Devin, couple. stop putting bad juju on it, talking about it's going to be over in two years, motherfucker. What? See, see, <laughs> oh, wow. see, first, he did right after it happened. He goes, "I bet it ain't going to last more than two or three years." I was like, "Why you got to put that bad?" See, <laughs> that yeah, bad shit. fucked up, Devin. Damn. Well, you know, Devin had a lot of podcast juice that night, <laughs> and uh... I might have had, I might have had a little bit too. <laughs> he, but, uh, he was, he was, he was speaking from the heart. True. But real quick, well, we got a few minutes. Uh, let's let's talk. We got five minutes. Uh, let's talk about um, why I'm pissed off right now. Because uh, Ronda Rousey got a title shot? Pretty much. <laughs> he was angry about that as soon as we saw it at the viewing yesterday. <laughs> but that's not what I was going to talk about. I'm pissed <laughs> off because the Young Bucks and, and Cody Rosen and the Bullet Club is very, very popular because they sold out their all-in tickets in less than 30 minutes, and I couldn't get none. I, was I pissed. thought it was three minutes. 
Now, it's, Ten thousand seats in three minutes. It, it's so it was, the number they put out was twenty nine minutes and thirty seconds. Damn, dude, that's huge. Well, you know, I, I, I think a lot of those sales is based on speculations of who might and who might not be there. You know what I mean? What? Well, honest to be honest with you, uh, me, Cal, and our mutual friend Ed, we were going to go, and we just wanted to go because I, I just thought it was going to be. A great idea, and then when I started seeing some of the the guests that they were going to have for the convention that they were putting on as well, I'm like, I have to go to this, man. Uh, Bruce Pritchard and uh, Conrad is going to be there. Bischoff, uh, uh, Hall and Nash, X Pac, um, comedian that I'm I'm very very much a fan of. Ron Funches, he's going to be Sam there. Sam Roberts, Sam Sam Roberts going to be there. Wow. Sam Rob, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be there, but I know he'll be at all in for sure. Right, but I mean, just the fact that, that, that all these independent wrestlers that I like was putting on this show, I like, I, and it's close to my t- my town. Like, I had to go to this, and I'm just pissed off. I'm not going, man. But congratulations to them for selling that shit out in 30 minutes and rubbing it in Dave man, Meltzer's that is face. Huge. I don't know if y'all know how big that is. Oh, I, that's why I had I had to be a part of it, man. I I wanted to be man, there. That- that's huge for professional wrestling. Like, for, for professional wrestling itself, like, Ring of Honor's biggest shows of the year at the biggest venues don't sell out like that. Right. Like, this is a, a, a spectacle of itself. And, and, of course, he's got to do this every year now. He can't just have a one-time deal where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to do all in, and that's yeah. it. Now we're all out. You know, um, and it, I, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a, a promo picture of me sitting there looking sad, and instead of saying all in, it's gonna say left out, <laughs> just to let him know how I feel about not being a part of this event. Um, <laughs> but no, man, this is this is huge. I mean, this is this is a step outside. You can't really call this an independent event. You can't call you this can't. an indie show. This is. This is huge. This is fucking big, not only for, for, for professional wrestling, I mean, and look for at, the culture of wrestling itself, and like for the next level of where the independents are going to go. You know. Well, that what you said, like for real, man. Because if you really think about it, for I mean, even though obviously Cody was in WWE at point at one point, but for a bunch of guys who are un, you know, not with the WWE to do some shit like that, and the names they got on this card. I mean, outside of WWE, I mean, this fucking thing is loaded. I mean, they just put Rey Mysterio on at the damn press conference. Right. So it's like, I don't know, man. That's going to be fucking sick to be at. Hopefully, by the time September gets here, we can figure out a way to get some tickets. Right. Right now, I can't afford to give them. I'm pretty sure there will be, like, radio stations or giveaways or something like that. And then, again, you always got scalpers at the door. I know that um, at the show that I was at this uh, past week in Royal Oak, the, when, when they were setting up chairs, they were like, oh, well, we got oh so many extra chairs, and the show is sold up. They were like, oh, don't worry, people are going to come. So, you know, like, there was always that, too. So, like, even when places say they're sold out, like, you, you get WrestleMania that's sold out in every year, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. You know, like, fucking 70,000 seats sold out in an hour. But there's a lot of those seats that are purchased by radio station and, that and was American a- Express. And, you know, stuff like that, too. So, All right. Well, that, that's going to have to be the last one on that. we got to wrap this thing up, man. But, uh, Mr. Thunder, why don't you go ahead and throw out your social medias and all that good stuff real quick. Yo, I'm Tony Thunder. <laughs> I hate you so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rinnerwrestlerring.com. <laughs> you, you know. All right, when wrestlingring dot com hit, hit Tony Thunder up on all his social media, Cal. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Detroit Knockout uh, on Twitter and Instagram, Kyle Collison on Facebook, and uh, yeah, be out on the lookout for uh, all these local MMA fights you got coming. Maneeb's fighting June ninth. Uh, we've got Drew Murray fighting June fifth, June fifteenth for the uh, WXC and shit. Whole bunch. That's of stuff a Friday. Yeah, a bunch of them. All right, and you can hit me up on Twitter at Devin the Six Three. That's D E V I N T H E Six Three. You can hit me up on Instagram at All Steak No Sizzle. That's one word. If you're looking for a car, go to SouthfieldQualityCars.com. And when you find you a car on their website, and you go in to make your purchase, 
uh, use the reference code 19309. That's 19309. And you will receive $500 off of your vehicle. Yeah, use 1939. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> with all that being said, <laughs> all that good. That's not nice, Gray. That's not very really nice. Fuck all you hoes. I'm out of here. Until next time. Why they got to be hoes? Why they got to be hoes? <laughs> Peace. Dang it. And fuck your couch. I hung up on Tony and Kyle said it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even say it no more. <laughs> I didn't even get we a all... chance to say it because Devin fucked me over, but Devin didn't fuck me over. Yeah, we're yeah, we're off the air, but we're all still on. Wait, we are hey, off the air, right? Look, Bubble okay. Ray Dudley's a fucking dick.